I researched economic models, investigated one for modeling competition in business, extended it into an overly complicated problem, and found solutions by simulating natural selection. Here's how it went down. On Planet Lime, we have the civilization of lemons. There are only two major companies selling uh, massages. Two companies control the market, so it's a duopoly, nearly a monopoly. They both want to maximize their profits given their situation. I wanted to model this, so I first turned to Corno Competition, a well-known model actually inspired by duopolies. In Corno Competition, a company's profits are defined intuitively. Price of product minus cost per product all multiplied by quantity. This price, however, is determined by the demand, which is linked to the total quantity of a product in the market. As an example, with two companies, the price of a product could be determined by 50 minus 2 multiplied by the total quantity between the two companies. So the more produced, the lower the price. The less they produce, the higher the price, but then less is sold. And don't forget about your costs, which could be something like 3 per unit. This problem is actually fairly trivial because the solution can be found algebraically like this. You don't need to understand the method, the important thing is the answer. With these variables, the optimal move is to produce a quantity of 7.83 products. Let's round that to 8. To show that it's the solution, I wrote this code to simulate Corno competition and plotted the profits of the companies with various quantities onto this table. You may notice that using a quantity of 8 doesn't seem like a great move. Both making 6 seems like a better move to make more profit, but these companies aren't working together. If you assumed the other company was going to make 6 products, why wouldn't you make 9 products instead to get more profit? This is where it would become a mind game, except if you highlight the best moves for each company given each possible scenario, you'll notice that both these numbers are highlighted where both companies make 8 products. This is where the strategies converge, because there's no better thing to do if you assume the other company will make 8 products than to make 8 products yourself. Back to Planet Lime, I thought, nah this model won't cut it, it's too easy, I'm going to adapt it. Now, the two companies have a defined market share which will affect their prices. Let's say company A has 40% market share and company B has 60% market share. If the price of a normal massager would be 14, company A will sell each one for 11.2 to compete, whilst company B will sell at 16.8. This is only a simplified way to incorporate market share, of course. So how should company A raise its market share? This new model works in repeated turns where a company has limited resources, let's use 10, to allocate between quantity and quality of their products. At the end of their turn, the quality is added to the company's brand score. Brand score starts as a random number, and its brand score compared to competition's brand score will determine its market share. A simple way to adapt a strategy for this model is to take the calculation for an optimal move in a normal corner competition and make it simply allocate more resources to quality when market share is low. This improves strategy takes one away from quantity and adds one to quality if market share is below 60%. I simulated 1000 turns, pitting the slightly better strategy against the strategy for a regular Corno problem. Despite being rolled a starting market share of 40%, the slightly better strategy finished with 143,000 profit, whilst the old strategy finished with 109,000. Of course, this strategy is definitely not optimized. Let's discover a better strategy in a fun way, using a genetic algorithm. Genetic algorithms are used to optimize solutions by simulating natural selection. It's like how the strongest foxes will be more like to survive and pass on their genes. I essentially made hundreds of planet limes, let the ones where our target company performs well mates to pass on their genes, and I killed off all of the weaker ones and replaced them with the baby planet limes. Okay, before you lose your mind from a concept of planets having babies, let me explain what genes mean in this context. Every turn, a company allocates 10 resources between quantity and quality. The driving force to allocate resources differently over time is the company's market share. I devised a method where a company has a solution for every possible 1% market share. This list of solutions would be a set of genes. Companies that happen to have some good genes will pass on their genes to the next generation, and the algorithm eventually finds a solution. It's really a perfect solution, and it takes a very long time to reach, but considering there's about this many possible sets of solutions, it's a fine approach. I ran this algorithm to make a solution against the slightly improved strategy from earlier, and got a set of numbers like this. These numbers define how much is allocated depending on the percent of market share. In this massive segment, it seems the algorithm found that the optimal move is to deposit entirely to quality to raise its market share. Using these genes gives us a strategy that trumps both strategies. Strategies. Then, I went a few layers deeper. I trained a new genome against this one, and did that again, and again, in hopes of finding a meta strategy. And I eventually realized I kept seeing solutions come up that look like this. I then tested this genome against itself, and both companies finished with about 138,000 profit each, which is a very good score for this game. Perhaps it's an optimal strategy, assuming players don't try to figure out the opponent's strategy mid-game to adjust accordingly, because I don't want to code that. Wait, oh bother, all the plant limes have fused to create a lime star. Come on, get back to work. Lime star? No. Ah!